Hi everyone, Leah here from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with another fun beading video for you. Before I get started, go take a look at our channel and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and notification bell and you'll always know when we're posting new content. All right, today's project is going to be a really great stress-free earring design that features a cushion cut Krakowski brand crystal stone from EurekaCrystalBeads.com and just two other types of beads. So this is gonna be a great stress-free project that doesn't take a million different ingredients. So the other things that we're gonna be using in this project, so here we have that beautiful Krakowski stone, and then we have some size 15 seed beads. These ones happen to be Mayuki. And then I have these really beautiful coated quartz gemstone beads. These are two millimeter micro faceted little beautiful little sparklies. And this color is in steel gray, which is actually a very pale sort of lavender purple. And I liked it with the, because at certain angles you can see that that sort of very pale purple in there and I like that this sort of helps to pull that out but not take away from the rest of the stone. It's a nice neutral color right here. Now what's great about this earring? So first of all for a beginner a beginning beater this is fantastic. It's going to be a no stress way to learn how to make a beautiful bezel around a crystal stone. Now for your more advanced beaters this is gonna be a much easier earring, but I have to tell you, it's gonna be a quick earring for you guys. And that's fantastic, especially as we approach holiday season because all of you who are doing vendor fairs and bazaars or are trying to beef up your Etsy shops, this is gonna be a great seller because it's inexpensive to make and it's fast to make. So it's a great one to consider for your selling purposes too. So got a lot of good things going for it. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is this project is actually my very first project using Toho 1G thread. And I'm not kidding. This is my first time using it. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'm a fireline girl through and through, but wow, am I adding this into my repertoire now? Because it's like a stronger version of like a Nymo. And I do have, I do love Nymo. Nymo has its purposes, but this really is wonderful. It's sort of the equivalent of like a size D Nemo. It has a little bit of a stretch to it, which Fireline doesn't. So if you struggle with tension, uh, this is gonna be great uh, because that little stretch is really gonna help you pull those beads in nice and tight. You are gonna wanna pre-stretch a little bit before you start to use it like any uh, thread like this. This is 100% nylon, and that's gonna help give your pieces a really beautiful uh, supple feel if that's the type of beading texture you're going for in your project. But in this case, it's going to pull us in nice and tight in this great earring. So if you haven't tried 1G, I definitely recommend giving 1G a try, especially with this really fun, fast earring. Okay, to start off, I've threaded my size 12 needle through 16 of my size 15 seed beads, and I brought them all the way to the end of my 1G thread. I'm leaving a tail that's long enough that I could stick a needle on it later and weave it into my project. And I'm gonna start by passing through all of these beads again so I can make them into a loop. Now, if you don't go through all of them at once, that's totally okay. You can go through the rest in a second pass. Let's get through these last little bits there. Okay, so now that have all of my beads down there in a little loop. I'm just going to go ahead and tie my little tail here to my working thread in a square knot just to help keep things keep things tightened up. Right over left, then left over right. We'll make your square knot nice and tight. <laughs> all right, so that's what we got. Now, before I keep going and do anything with beads, I am going to travel through just a little bit more of my little beaded ring here because I think that when you start a project with a beaded ring, it's best to travel through a few more so you hope to pull your knot into your beadwork. And so that way, when you start your beadwork, you're coming out of a bead instead of sort of out of a knot in between two beads. So I just went through about five or so beads. All right, and that's what we got for step one. All right, for the next step, I have picked up the following beads. Six 15s, three of my little two millimeter faceted beads, and another six 15 beads. And by the way, for this half of the earring, we're gonna be using 18 of these. So that's just 18 for one half of your pair of earring. We're gonna pick those up, and we're going to travel back through the 15 that we're coming out of. 
and just loop back around through it. So your needle is coming out of the same side of the same bead as your thread is. And you can see we make a little loop. Now we're going to continue on in our circle through another four beads, just like that. Give us a nice little tug. Oh, I love this one she thread. I'm so thrilled with it. And we're gonna pick up the same sequence of beads again. There's our six. Let's get our three on there. And our six. I love these little two millimeter faceted beads. They're so pretty. All right, so we have our same beads on there again. And we're gonna repeat that same process. Go down, follow your thread down to the bead that you're coming out of and loop back around through it in the same exact way. And we're gonna make another little loop. So I'm gonna repeat this two more times. So if you have to do a review, you can go back and watch that part of the video. But essentially all I'm doing is now passing through an additional four beads, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna make another loop. One, two, three, four, which will be this one here. And I'm gonna make one more loop. So I'll see you back here in a sec. All right, this is what we have now. This is the last loop that I just made. You can see it can still pull loose right there. I just went through and I locked it down. Now, this is the first loop that I made. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel through these beads here, right up into this loop, and I wanna exit the middle of those faceted two millimeter beads there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just head right up here and then right out there. So here's where I am now. You can see right where my tail was and I traveled right up like that. Okay, now, now it gets to be the fun part because now we get to start to add our stone into our bezel. So I'm going to just place my little, almost like four leaf clover there, and I'm going to take the point of my stone and I'm gonna sit it right in that little circle there, just like that. That's where it's going to sit, just to give you kind of a nice visual of how this is gonna work. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add beads that are gonna bring these loops up, kind of like little prongs, and they're gonna hold the stone in. So the beads that I'm gonna pick up now to hold the stone into place are gonna be these little groups of four size 15s. And you can see how they're pulling in the points of those loops, the very middle of those two millimeter, uh, little groups of three two millimeters. So the easiest thing to do now is to pick up your four seed beads and you're going to go through the next little tip of the next little loop. And don't worry about pulling anything tight right now. You can just let this stay loose. You will pull it tight when you actually get the stone in there. So don't worry about pulling it tight yet. You're going to encourage that to kind of be out like a little point. Let's get that last one in there, that second to the last one rather. And you are gonna love when you see what happens with this. Now the next one we go into is the one that we were initially coming out of. You can see right there. Now this is where I like to put this down. You're gonna sit your stone right on top there and we're gonna give this a cool little pull. And if it looks a little wonky, don't worry. It's just because you have to pull tighter and it has to even out in the back. So sometimes it may look a little funny on the front if until it's nice and pulled tight, that little point in the back of your stone isn't centered in this circle. So until it gets pulled tight, that could still kind of sit a little bit off and that's gonna make the front look a little bit funny. But as long as you make sure that it's sitting nicely in the center of that point and then you get it pulled nice and tight, it's gonna be beautifully centered. So to tighten this up and to keep it tight, because you can see as I let go, it loosens up a bit. We're gonna hold it nice and tight. And I like to kind of wrap my thread around my finger like that to keep it tight. And we're gonna travel through this circle all over again, at least one more time. But if it still gets a little springy and it still wants to spring open, you can go through it another time as well. What you're basically looking for is that you'd be able to put this down and it doesn't spring open at all. It doesn't start to show thread in that circle that we've just created. That's how you know that it's kind of nicely tight. And as you can see, I can already let go and it doesn't tighten up. So, so we're doing good here. I only have to go through the one time. And again, I love 
the Toho Wonji for this because it has that slight springiness. It really keeps things nice and tight. Um, am I definitely going to still prefer Fireline for some projects? Absolutely. Am I now definitely going to prefer Toho Wonji for some projects? Absolutely. It really makes tension so effortless. Let me get through that last one there. All right, let me give it one nice little tug. And oh, so pretty. What a fun little bezel. But we're not done yet. We're going to do some really fun um, additions to the outer edge of this before we add that ear wire on. Okay, so our next little step is to travel through the little side two millimeter here. And I mean that because this is the one we're coming out of and then it has one on either side. We're gonna travel up the side and then through two more 15s, just like that. Now I'm gonna pick up two 15s, a little two millimeter here, two 15s. And you're gonna to go to the next little loop here. So we have these little, they're almost, look at them as little pairs, okay? That was, it was a big loop, but now they kind of sit with two little matching bits next to each other. So you have four little pairs. We're gonna to go to the next little pair. And if we were coming up the, uh, the two millimeter and the two seed beads, we're gonna go down the two seed beads and then the two millimeter. So we're kind of coming out of the same three beads but just going in the opposite direction and on the next little sort of arm down. I call them arms because they're sort of hugging the stone. <laughs> and what you're gonna get is a little group of seed beads that sits nicely right along the edge of that stone, which I love because it helps to cover up that edge, which gives this a very, very finished look, which I think is really nice. So now we wanna get through that center two millimeter. So that way we can come up from the next side two millimeter and then two more 15s. So that way we can do this again. So I'm gonna pick up two 15s, a two millimeter and then two 15s. We're gonna hop over again. Go down the two seed beads right before that side two millimeter and then go through the two millimeter. Get that nice little embellishment on the outside. Go through the little center, up the side, and the next two seed beads. So I'm gonna keep going around and I will show you what it looks like when this part is finished. Okay, so this is what we have here. I just added in this last little embellishment on the side. And what we get is a really beautiful, open, lacy bezel that's extremely secure, number one. But number two, still shows off so much of that lovely Krakowski crystal volcano colored stone. So you really, oh, it's just, I love this one. So to add our ear wire, we're going to travel through that little center two millimeter there because we want to come up to this little guy right there. So the first uh, little two millimeter that we added when we started this these outer embellishments. So we're going to go up that little two millimeter, up the little two 15s, and then into that first little embellishment we did on the outside coming out of that very center two millimeter faceted quartz bead. Oh, and this is what it looks like from the back. All right, so what we're gonna do for our loop. You can do any sort of beaded loop that you like. You could use a wire guard if you'd prefer, whatever you kind of like here. Um, I like doing a little bit more than just a basic beaded loop. So I incorporated some of the two millimeter quartz beads right into there. So I picked up a 15, I picked up a little quartz bead, and I picked up three 15s, and another quartz bead, and lastly a 15. So that's what I have. I'm gonna loop back around into the quartz bead that I'm coming out of, like that. But we wanna get this to look a little bit cleaner and a little bit nicer. So. Now, number one, we're going to travel back through this to reinforce it, but when we do that, we're gonna skip this little center bead right here, and that's gonna give us a nice little accent that you'll see in just a second. So travel up through the 15, the quartz bead, and the 15, and travel down the 15, the quartz bead, and the 15, and you'll notice how we skipped over that one in the very center. Now, when you pull through the little quartz bead at the base, 
that's kind of the best place to sort of pull this tight. It forces that little center 15 to kind of go up at a nice little point. And to me, this adds a nice little, a nice little feature. I love doing that within, uh, within little deep loops. And if you want, you can just take an awl if you want to just make it a little bit neater, just like that. A little bit of a nicer way to do a little bit of a beaded loop. Now we just have to end off our thread. So we're going to just travel through our project wherever we feel compelled to go. I tend to like to go towards the back and we're gonna start to tie some knots to finish off our thread. I do recommend doing some knots as you weave out because this isn't a super tightly woven stitch like peyote where you can get away with just weaving in a bunch of different areas. You're going to want to get some knots in there because you don't want to have any problems with it coming undone while it's hanging off of your ear. So I'm just going to keep weaving through and doing some knots as I go and I'll see you back here in a minute with the finished project. All right, I have used my chain nose pliers here to open up the loop on my ear wire. I just swiveled it open to the side. I stuck my beautiful little earring on there and I'm going to swivel it shut. And here we have the finished product. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I love these. You get to see so much of the Krakowski crystal in there. You only had to use a couple of different elements in this earring. Great for a beginner, a great super fast sellable project for your more advanced beater, and overall just a really quickie, fun, stress-free project. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to visit us on over at EurekaCrystalBeads.com for everything I used in this video. We are going to link you below, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.